Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, we will be discussing about facial nerve paralysis, which is also called as Bell's palsy. So, facial nerve paralysis is a low motor neuron type paralysis of facial muscles through the compression of facial nerve in the facial canal near the stylomastoid foramen. So, in the last video, we have discussed about facial nerve anatomy. This is the diagram. So, the facial nerve comes over the cranial cavity to the stylomastoid foramen. This is the stylomastoid foramen. Here, the facial nerve is compressed. So the reason of uh, compression is actually not known, maybe due to viral infection. So now let's see the features of the facial nerve paralysis. So the first feature is facial asymmetry. The affected side is drawn to the healthy side. Let's understand the first point with the help of a diagram. So this is the image of Bell's palsy. The, we can see the facial asymmetry. The face is pulled toward the healthy side. You can see the face is pulled to the healthy side. Let's go to the second point. Second point is the loss of horizontal wrinkles on forehead. This is due to the paralysis of occipitofrontalis muscle. Now let's go back to the image. So this is the image. Uh, we can see the loss of wrinkles on forehead. Uh, occipitofrontalis muscle we have already studied in the scalp. It, it is a muscle. It has two bellies. Now because of the paralysis of the occipitofrontalis muscle, there is loss of wrinkles on the forehead. Now let's go to the 3D anatomy. So this is the occipitofrontalis muscle. So paralysis of this muscle, paralysis of this muscle causes loss of wrinkles on the forehead. Now let's go to the third point: widening of palpebral fissure and inability to close the eye. This is caused due to the paralysis of orbicularis oculi. So orbicularis oculi is it is a muscle of facial expression. Now let's understand what is orbicularis oculi. This is the orbicularis oculi muscle. Because of paralysis of this muscle, because orbicularis oculi muscle, the patient cannot close his eyes and uh, there is widening of palpable fissure. Now let's understand what is palpable fissure. This is the upper eyelid and this is the this is our lower eyelid. So the space between the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid is called as the palpable fissure. So the fourth point is tears flow down from the eye. This is caused by paralysis of the orbicularis oculi muscle. Of angular mouth towards the affected side and inability to close the angular mouth. This is caused due to the paralysis of the zygomaticus major muscle. Now let's go to the 3D anatomy. So this is the zygomaticus major muscle. Because of the paralysis of this muscle, there is sagging of the mouth. Now let's go to the sixth point. Loss of nasolabial furrow. This is caused by paralysis of levator labi superioris as a nasi. Now let's understand what is nasolabial furrow. You see this uh, marked area. This hole is called as a nasolabial furrow. Because of the paralysis of this muscle, levator labi superioris alicunasi muscle, we can, uh, th there is loss of this hole. The, uh, the patient doesn't have this hole because of the paralysis of this muscle. Let's see this muscle in 3D. So this is the levator labi superioris alicunasi muscle. So because of the paralysis of this muscle, uh, there is loss of nasal label furrow. Seventh point Acclimation of food into the vestibule of mouth. This is caused due to the paralysis of the buccinator muscle. Now, what is vestibule? Let's understand it with the help of an image. So, this is our oral cavity. The space between the gums and the lips is nothing but the vestibule. So, there is accumulation of food in the vestibule because of the paralysis of the buccinator muscle. Let's see the muscle in 3D. This is the buccinator muscle. So the paralysis of this muscle, there is acclimation of food in, the, in our vestibule. Let's go to the eighth point. Dibbling of saliva from the angular mouth, this is caused to the paralysis of orbicularis oris. See the muscle in 3D. This is our orbicularis oris muscle. So the paralysis of this muscle, there is dibbling of saliva from our mouth. Let's go to the last point. Loss of resistance when one presses cheek with inflated vestibule and air leaks out from between the lips. Understand this point with the help of an image. When our vestibule is inflated with air, so the person will not be able to resist this air because of the, because of the paralysis of the buccinator muscle. So these were the basic features of Bell's palsy. That's all for today. Meet you in the next video.